Greetings, history lovers. Dr. Philip Travis here, YouTube channel History Changes, and I'm standing in front of one of the, the great historical sites of the Western world, a UNESCO heritage site here in Ravenna, Italy. The site behind me is the Basilica of San Vitale, and this is important for some Byzantine history, so we're going to get into some real Byzantine history um, in this video today. The Byzantine Empire, for those of you who don't know, began as the Eastern Roman Empire. It centered at Constantinople, and before Rome had collapsed, before Rome had collapsed, the city of Constantinople became an administrative district of part of what is known as the Eastern Roman Empire. After the Western Roman Empire fell in 476, the Eastern Roman Empire continued and it rose to its height in what is known as the Byzantine Empire, particularly under the leadership of the Emperor and Empress Justinian and Theodora. After Rome had fallen to the, the Germanic tribes of groups like the Ostrogoths, Italy had fallen out of the influence of the Byzantine or, if you will, the Eastern Roman Empire. But under the leadership of General Belisarius, Justinian's general, much of the domains of Italy and much of the Mediterranean lands of the Romans were retaken by the forces of the Eastern Roman Empire, by the Byzantine. At the time when Justinian was emperor, Ravenna actually became the capital of the Byzantine Empire in Italy, not Rome. And so inside this cathedral, in this medieval town, this Byzantine town, you see fantastic mosaics of Justinian and his various consorts, Theodora and her consorts. Highly, highly significant 1,500-year-old mosaics, tiled mosaics of the emperor and the empress from the 500s, from the 6th century. It's a great look into what Byzantine leadership looked like, as well as the lavish decorations that associate, came, came to be associated with some of the greatest achievements of Byzantine art and engineering. Justinian, of course, became famous for a number of things. In Istanbul or Constantinople, as it was known at the time, uh, the cr construction of, of the famous um, Hagia Sophia or Hagia Sophia, the great, great church with the great dome in Constantinople, today Istanbul. His, 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 his empire, his leadership almost fell apart during the so-called Nika revolt in the, fifth, in the sixth century uh, when his wife Theodora, it's believed, was the one who actually inspired Justinian to, to take power, to take command, and to destroy his enemies, which he did in the Circus, or I'm sorry, in the Hippodrome. Circus Maximus is in Rome, in the Hippodrome, the great racetrack in the city of Constantinople. And so, in many respects, the greatness and power of Justinian as a, as a Byzantine monarch, as a Byzantine empire, is actually owned, owed to the highly significant um, Empress Theodora, who came from rather common roots, it's believed. Common roots, it's believed. And so this is very much a tribute not only to the leadership of a patriarch, a patriarchal leader, Justinian, but also to the significance of the great Empress Theodora, who rose through common roots, fell in love with Justinian, and is probably the one who most gave inspiration to Justinian to stay in power, to not flee the city of Constantinople. So we're going to take a look inside now, and we're going to take a look at some of these amazing mosaics. So we are inside the Basilica of San Vitale, and I want to show you kind of what these mosaics look like. First of all, if you look at the floors, you'll notice the floors too have these elaborate mosaics. Again, these Byzantine mosaics built in the 6th century. Closer over here, you'll notice on this side, if I can focus us in a little bit, this is Justinian and his knights, his priests, and so forth. If we come over this way, we will notice as soon as I have a chance. 
see here, this is now Theodora and her consorts. Again, these incredible mosaics from the Byzantine Empire. 1,500 years old. Theodora pictured in the center with, of course, the halo behind her, indicative of the role of religion, the Orthodox religion. This is an Orthodox cathedral in the Byzantine world. Um, the halo behind the empress here, and uh, there's also one behind Justinian. The halo uh, identifies the link between not only the religion and the state, but also the religion and, uh, and, and the monarchy, the, the emperor and the empress. Um, and this was something that historians have referred to as Caesaropapism, the combination of the state, the religion, and the monarchy. Again, a better shot now of Theodora and her consorts, the great empress. She rose from the ranks of a commoner, fell in love with Justinian here in Ravenna, capital of the Byzantine Empire in the West. Theodora is said to have been the one who inspired Justinian to not flee following the Nika revolt in Constantinople in the early 6th century. Panning over here, you can see other elaborate mosaics, again depicting religion and the state. So as we walk, walk towards one of the entrances, I wanted to point something out. This is again a orthodox structure. Notice these outside, kind of like buttresses for the side, but it's an orthodox structure. And so you'll notice the very thin brick laying. This is very indicative. You look over here, you might see it even better. Very indicative of the orthodox building style that you find, you're not gonna see that it's too dark, but you find this orthodox style with these thin bricks, uh, very common in a lot of the Byzantine building. I just wanna take us walk inside again to get another look at this. We enter into the Basilica. The main corridors to the right here, where you see people sitting. Again, this is a church. And then over here is where we come and we see our famous mosaics. Another site at the Cathedral of San, the Basilica of San Vitale, is the Mausoleum of Gala. It was originally believed to be the burying place of Theodosius, Emperor Theodosius' daughter, uh, probably not, but it's definitely a funeral site. The Mausoleum of Gala, you see, you see the cathedral, the basilica, just behind. It looks very, very um, um, understated from the outside, but wait till we walk inside and see what we find. As we walk inside, you see another incredible scene of Byzantine mosaics. Hello history lovers, Dr. Philip Travis here, YouTube channel History Changes, and we're still in Ravenna, Italy here, and we're at another one of the, the numerous 
famous sites uh, that include not only the, the Basilica of San Matale and not only the Tomb of Dante and other sites, but also behind me this um, very old Aryan Christian church, um, the Basilica of Apollinar. This, this, this church was created by the Ostrogothic ruler Theodoric. Uh, in 504 BCE, he controlled a lot of the areas of, of the Roman territories following the fall of Rome in 476. It was consecrated again by Justinian in, I want to say, 568, but don't, don't, don't hold me on that date, but in the, in the 6th century. And I'm going to show you some stuff from the inside because this also has some of these fantastic mosaics depicting the deeply intertwined sort of um, religious nature of the Byzantine world in the post, the post-Roman imperial period. The Basilica of Apollinar, originally founded by the Germanic Ostrogothic king Theodoric in 504. This is inside of the Basilica of Apollinar, an Aryan Christian, early Christian church that was founded by Theodoric. Theodoric was the Austro-Gothic Germanic uh, king and ruler who controlled a great deal of the former Roman territories after the fall of Rome in 476. This church was uh, originally consecrated by, by Theodoric in 504 BCE and again by Justinian later in the in the sixth century and again this is a site where you see some of these stunning Byzantine mosaics uh, the Sun is over there so I'm gonna come up here and show us these ones over here again observe the just incredibly stunning mosaics that you find here in Ravenna in this Aryan early Orthodox Christian Church, the Basilica of Apollinar. 